My channel has reached 100,000 subscribers, and it feels unbelievable. Thank you so much for the support. As promised, I'm doing a 50 Welkins giveaway in this video. If you want to participate, you need to register on lootbar.gg through my link and leave your lootbar UID and your in-game UID in the comments. 50 winners will be selected randomly after one week. And during this giveaway, anyone who uses my link from the description will be able to get a Welkin on Loot Bar for only $2. But the amount is limited, so if you want a Welkin for $2, you'd better hurry. Now, let's get back to the video. It's been some time since the 5.1 beta started, so in this video, let's summarize everything we know about version 5.1. I'll talk about banners, events, rewards, the playable Mavwika, and much more. Version 5.1 is set to release on October 9th, while the special program for this version will go live on September 27th. You can expect confirmed banners and other info during the live stream. We will also get three codes to redeem 300 Primo Gems, which I'll post on my channel immediately. So subscribe so you don't miss them. Now, about the banners. If you are waiting for Ryothsli or Shenhe, you'll have to wait at least until the next update, as there's no info about them in version 5.1. Based on current data, in the first phase, you can expect to see Zelonen, who seems to be a really fun character to play, and she didn't get any nerfs in the beta, only slight buffs. Alongside Zelonen, Chiori will also get her rerun. As for the second phase, we will see Nahida and Hu Tao. Initially, it was said that Ian-san would appear as a four-star character in version 5.1, but she is now a five-star character and will be released sometime in the 5.5 update. Let's continue with the events. The main event is the Sabzerus Festival in Sumeru. We already experienced it once during the Sumeru Archon quest. I think everyone remembers that quest where we kept waking up in the same day over and over again. That was the Sabzerus Festival. This festival is an event in Sumeru celebrating the birth of Lesser Lord Kusanali, also known as Nahida. In the main event, you can expect to see all the characters from Sumeru, so it's going to be really fun. I can't wait to hear Sino's jokes. Additionally, Nahida's birthday will also be in version 5.1. So, combining the Sabzeris Festival and Nahida's birthday, she is getting her banner in version 5.1. Since version 5.0 gave us a free weapon, version 5.1 will give us a free character, and it's going to be Candace. You will be able to get her from the main event, so don't forget to complete it. We also have three sub-events in version 5.1, including an interesting combat event, a catching event, and the return of Lieben. Usually when we see Lieben, he talks about the next region, so we might get some information about Snezhnaya from him. If you're having fun exploring Natlan in version 5.0, you might be excited about a new map in version 5.1, but unfortunately, there won't be one. Or, I should say, there will only be a small location with one teleport point and one boss, which drops materials for Xylonen. The map from 5.0 is pretty large, so in 5.1, you'll have to continue exploring it. But there will be rewards for exploration after all. We'll be able to collect up to 400 Primo Gems based on exploration progress in Natlan. These rewards are only available in version 5.1, so they probably won't carry over to 5.2 and beyond. Since we didn't meet Zelonen in the Archon Quest in version 5.0, she will appear in version 5.1 and will have her story quest in that version as well. You can also expect to see Capitano and Auroran, but what's more interesting is that we will be able to play as Mavwika in version 5.1. Playable Mavwika is part of the Archon Quest in version 5.1, where we will play as her while she fights someone. Natlan is at war with Abyss, so you might be able to guess who Mavwika will face in the 5.1 Archon Quest. In the 5.1 beta, Mavuika has no usable skills. You can only walk around as her, but she automatically summons Sacred Flames to attack nearby monsters. I'm not sure what Sacred Flames are exactly, but this mechanic will likely be temporary in version 5.1. In story quests, the game often gives us the opportunity to play as the character the quest is related to, so it seems MiHoYo has decided to implement something similar in the Archon Quest. We also have some technical details to share. 
When Mavuika is on the field, sacred flames are summoned every five seconds, dealing AOE Pyro True DMG to enemies and knocking them into the air. The base damage is 94,852 at level 92. If no enemies are within a 15 meter range, sacred flames will be summoned 15 meters in front of the character. The AOE radius is 8 meters, similar to Catching's Burst. It was also mentioned that Mavuika will one-punch the sky in version 5.1. There were no details on what that means, but it will probably be something like a cutscene in the Archon Quest. Once again, Mavuika will only be playable in the version 5.1 Archon Quest, and no, we won't get her banner in this update. One last thing about the Archon Quest. It seems we will have friendly Fatui units in some parts, so maybe Capitana will team up with us? But that's just my speculation. Oh, by the way, if you're expecting to see Columbina in the Archon Quest, I have sad news. There's no mention of her in versions 5.1 or 5.3. In the 5.1 update, there will also be new trails for Keqing and Zhongli. Keqing's will look like purple wind with flowers following her, while Zhongli's will have a geo effect. Additionally, we have new character poses for completing the Imaginarium Theater. This time, the poses are for Kazuha, Yula, Candace, and Goro. There are also some quality of life improvements in version 5.1. Let's take a look. In version 5.1, if you've already cleared Abyss Floors 9 and 10, you will be able to claim the rewards instantly when the Abyss resets, meaning you don't have to clear them every time. Most of us can clear Floors 9 and 10, so from version 5.1 onward, we'll be able to get the rewards as soon as the Abyss resets. It wasn't specified whether progress from version 5.0 will count, or if you'll need to clear it one last time. I think they should give us the option to claim rewards while still in the Abyss, because currently, if you clear the Abyss, you have to exit first to claim the rewards. It would be nice if the developers addressed this. Another improvement. In version 5.1, you will be able to transfer your account to a different server. However, your account will be unavailable for a while during the transfer process. Now, let's talk about the total free pulls in 5.1. As an F2P player, you can expect around 70 pulls in total during the 5.1 update, 36 in the first phase and 34 in the second. If you have a Welkin, it'll be around 96 pulls, 48 in the first and 48 in the second phase. If you can't clear the Abyss and Imaginarium Theater completely, you can subtract 5 pulls from the total count. Well, that's everything we know about 5.1 at this moment. Once again, the special program for 5.1 will be on September 27th, so most of the details should be confirmed then. I'm looking forward to Zilonin's release and Mavuika's gameplay in 5.1. What about you? What are you most excited for in 5.1? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to save up to 20% on Genesis Crystals, visit lootbar.gg. All you need is your UID and server. The link is in the description.